Welcome back again, it is Aprilia, and it's like every single day we're getting a new release in this AI world. So today we are going to be talking about the new image generator by ByteDance, aka TikTok, known as SeaDream 3.0, which is currently ranked number two in the image leaderboard. And there's only two ELO difference into GPD 4.0, which is crazy. And the other crazy part is that this is 100% free to use as of right now. So you can basically register and there's even no credit limits. So you're basically able to prompt out many images as you want. That might change in a couple of days or maybe in a week. They might actually roll out the paid plans. But as of right now, it's all free prompting. So I would definitely use this opportunity to do things. And what comes into my initial testing, I have to absolutely say that this is very competitive entry against GPT-4.0. There are things that this one does 100% better, but there are things that is not as good as doing compared to GPT-4.0. So GPT-4.0 is, for example, a lot more better at text, but GPT-4.0, in my opinion, also has a lot more, you know, it doesn't have as much you know, variety when it comes to illustrative styles, like in terms of you want to prompt something anime related in there. And it will either give you something like very Ghibli like or something a bit more modern. And maybe then you can do some another very, very obscure anime style. But it's very, you know, limited into a couple of few different styles. While when I actually interacted here with, you know, Sea Dream, it's definitely able to do a lot more different styles. So this is definitely 100% better in terms of anime art and illustrative things. So let's kind of go into some of the things that I was able to prompt out. So once you actually go into the page, you can see there's image 3.0. And currently, you're not able to use reference images. If you upload a reference image, it will prompt out to image 2.0 Pro. And well, it is definitely not as good as 3.0. So that's probably a feature that's going to be added out later. And then there's standard 1K and 2K, which are all free to prompt. So let's go into some of the things I would done with 1K, which are also very, very good looking compared to the 2K one. So these are very good illustrations. And as you can see, like this is more like a modern European art style. You could see this in America. This is very traditional British illustration that you could see maybe on late 90s. Kind of reminds me of the the Peter the Rabbit or what is it called the yeah, Peter Rabbit covers on, on the books by Beatrix Potter. Then we have a bit more anime style illustration over here. And then the fourth one, which is maybe more akin to the second and third one here as well. So it does have a lot of different art styles. Um, that's what I like about it. And then in terms of like, it can also do very good. What it, this is like, a, this is not a clay animation, but it's like a 3D, 3D one. And these are really good. So this is basically, I wrote that in the top of the image, going to be writing Billy Woo. Well, and some of these prompts is actually put in on the bottom. So yeah, okay, it can't do absolutely everything. And there's also editing features here, in painting, expanding, retouch, HD upscale, regenerating, reprompting. So these are very good tools, which don't exist on GPT-4 as of right now. A similar image, and this was done on the 1K and the 2K versions. And the 1K versions look great too. These are adorable. These are adorable penguins. And <laughs> they look funny, they look funny. Then I tried to do a bit more like a realistic image. And I definitely can say to you that one of the things I like about the realistic images done with Sea Dream, based on my interactions, is that it's maybe able to do more exotic angles and more like what I would deem as more like realistic photos taken by people. Because when I look at like GPD 4.0, oh, I think it defaults to go into like headshots, like, you know, mug shots, so like a frontal headshot of a person's face. And in these other images, like with Sea Dream, it feels like the people are looking into different directions more. They are not like a frontal look here. So the boy is pointing out into the bottom. And this looks like a New York subway. And it's actually following the text really good. Here's another one. Well, now it's actually putting it on the actual train. This one's also very impressive. Here, it actually does two mops. So that's not very good. This ended up being kind of like a bad image. A lot of blurriness and things like that. A lot of people, some people are walking on the tracks. I guess they want to die. And then we have fourth one, which also looks very good. So look at the angle of the of the, 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 the 
text. It's not horizontal. It's like this diagonal angle here, which I love. And then actually started to actually write that on the text uh, in the shirt of the character. So it's starting to add sometimes a bit more of the text in other places. That's something I realized over here. Then I added to like, hey, add Sun Wukong, Pikachu and Mario in the same footage and we make them eat at McDonald's. And here we have McDonald's. Okay, it added two McDonald's in this case. And also there is a bit of distortion here, maybe on the face of the Sun Wukong. Sun Wukong has like many different, this is like the original film for the 40s. This is the style that Swatch trying to do here. There's another one, <laughs> Mario ended up being on outside, which is crazy. But here there is some distortion on, it tries to do the McDonald's logo here and the text. So there are definitely problems with text. And here we have like, I don't know what, <laughs> what type of fusion Pataras they were doing here, but uh, yeah, interesting. And then on the third photo, we have a bit more like a realistic thing, once again at McDonald's. And also it's also, in every photo, it's capturing the raining stuff. So I did say, yeah, it's raining outside. And then the fourth one, I don't know what this is, but it's adorable. And so these are actually pretty good, pretty good prompts. Like a three out of four, I think it managed to do everything. But like right now, <laughs> it's, raining. <laughs> it's raining inside. This is funny. This is funny, but I kind of like this adorable type of stuff. Like it doesn't always need to follow it. Sometimes like mistakes are bringing you the best amount of prompts. Like I, <laughs> I like it. So it's able to do multiple characters. That's the point. Now then I wanted to, hey, like try to do Berserk manga style. Well, definitely didn't deliver. So this is like, these are not looking anything like Berserk. This is looking very like a Mario type of thing. And these two here look like a very classical old manga. So definitely not able to adapt everything. Then I tried to do a couple of celebrity photos and it's not really good at that. So I tried to do Sarah, Sarah, Sarah Michelle Jeller and in Jose anime art style. So if I did the same prompt on actual Jet GPT, a GPT 4.0, it would have probably given me different, like two different anime styles. But what I love about this one is all of these four look different from each other. Like these are all different styles. Maybe this one is a bit more akin to the second one over here, but these are different styles. Uh, another one on the 1K version. And once again, it's like, there is a bit of variety here in terms of styles. These maybe are a bit more comic book art style, a bit more Western influenced, but overall, like it is able to do different anime art styles. And here I tried to do Chevy Chase and Sarah again to eating on Pizza Hut. Okay, able to do Pizza Hut. There was a lot of pizza here and Pizza Hut logos ended up being good. But these people, <laughs> they don't look anything like the people I tried to make it the prompt. Then I said also like a 1990 photo. I think this one looks like it could have been taken at 1990. And these, this could also be late 90s, maybe early 2000s type of look this one and the first one kind of look too modern in my opinion. So, and, and, and this is basically the same the same stuff here. It's not really any other results. So if you're like trying to do realism here in terms of like trying to capture celebrities, definitely not the one. Then obviously on GPT-4.0, we have been seeing a lot of these people doing PlayStation covers and obviously action figures. And here I just asked like, hey, do a new Final Fantasy game cover on PS5? And very varied different end results. Some of them like here, you can definitely see the text is kind of wonky, but it did actually capture the logo at least here. And this one ended up being pretty good. I mean, it did duplicate the PS5 logo, but like this art style here, look, could be like from a Final Fantasy game. So I like this, but a lot of text distortion here once again. And a fourth one, which also could be a cover for Final Fantasy 14, for example, definitely looks pretty good. Okay, the PS5 looks very wonky on the background, but I, I didn't ask for PS5. So it can, it can do a lot of different things. Then I did a prompt that I saw in GPT-4.0 about a mechanical heart, 4K, shallow depth. I think this is a pretty good quality, high realism. So it's not, okay, <laughs> I don't know where there's a car there. Okay, that's very interesting. Another one, which was basically a diff on different dimensions, 9 to 16, pretty good. Then I tried to do game illustration. This reminds me of a lot of the pre, pre AI illustrative art style from late 2010s that you see in a lot of games, a very Chinese art style. 
And very good one, very good one. But it wasn't able to actually understand, like, you know, this is from Elden Ring. Like, it doesn't know all the celebrities or the game characters. That's what GPT-4 is really good at. You can give it an obscure character, and it's able to, like, do it. Then I wanted to do this, like, an image where it would have a different styles on both sides. These ended up being pretty bad. It's just, like, a different lighting. This one ended up being a bit more trying to do something over here, but not quite. So... These are, these are not very good. Now I just took a random prompt from Civitai and let's try to prompt it. And let's do a two versions out of it, 1K and 2K on 9 to 16. And you can see like how fast, okay, these are against community, community black club. Okay, like let, let's just try to do woman in red latex suit, hyper realism, full body shots, side angle. Let's let's just try to do it, if it is able to do it now. So there are definitely some forms of censorship going on on the actual platform. So just so you know, so let's do the 2K versions. Let's just like see what it's basically able to cook up. And this should not take, okay, as you can see, it is pretty fast. This is pretty fast. And we got the ass here. We got the boobs. Like it's not holding back. Like GPD-4, let's be honest about it. When we want like a bit more of that sex appeal or something like that, it's really trying to censor itself. It's like really intentionally, I think, reducing like, you know, certain private parts, you know what I'm saying. So I, I think there's a like inherent censorship built into it. So the 1K versions look pretty good and the 2K versions, okay, like these are pretty well done. And even though it shows the images here, like it takes a bit of time to load, but these are pretty good. Like, the fingers are in a pretty good angle. Like, it's hyper-realism. This is, like, a real photo. A real photo. And these, in my opinion, pose-wise, I, I think, in general, the Sea Dream is doing a lot more dynamic poses by nature. These are more natural-looking photos compared to what GPD-40 would do, in my opinion. So, all things considered, like, this, to me, is so much better at like illustrative stuff something i would use on thumbnails and also only i think right now i would use gpd 40 for maybe more very very detailed prompts which i want to have a lot of things on it and a lot of text so in that one i think and also it's really good at like surrealism in my in right in this in this point but i mean looking at these results over here this is a lot more closer to what stable diffusion is doing without loras so a lot of the stable diffusion stuff is like really good because you have so many loras and all that type of stuff but it's so wonky to use that you have to always download every single model so i think this one is just really good like this is like really dominating right now and let's hope that it's going to be staying free for quite some time so we can keep prompting but thanks for watching guys i will be seeing you in the next video when it will be dropping out as there's so many of these ai things coming out on a daily basis and we are kind of like in a golden era because a few months back there was nothing coming out no, no new updates so I think they are kind of learning from each other. And by the end of the year, I don't know even where we at because the technology is just getting moving at so fast speed. Thanks for watching. See you soon.